In the first half of the decade, we saw the crowning of the first black Miss America and the first black astronaut launched into space. But when we looked for black artists in the new frontier of music television, there was a void. That is, until a pop superstar smashed through its largely homogenous playlist. It occurred to me, having watched MTV over the last few months, um, that it's, it, it's, got, it's a solid enterprise with it and it's got a lot going for it. I'm just floored by the fact that there's so, many bl so few black artists featured on it. Why is that? MTV was taking a slam, and, they were, and I was even taking a bit of a slam for being on it. And it was, excuse me, but both. Do you have a chance to watch MTV from time to time? Yeah, there's nothing to watch. When they put some black people on there, you know, I'll watch it. The criteria was you had to be thought of as a rock artist. And if you happen to be black, yellow, green, or yellow, they didn't care, as long as that was, that was the criteria there. In 1983, Rick James led a public assault on MTV for not playing black artists. Where was Rick James, Super Freak? Where was Diana Ross? Where was Earth, Wind & Fire? Where was Stevie Wonder? I mean, the fact of the matter was, in the early days, MTV was sort of a rock and roll channel. There weren't a lot of African-American rock artists. But MTV's all-rock format shattered, and its color barrier broke when the incomparable Michael Jackson released his new videos. <laughs> videos were an ideal showcase for Jackson, who had grown up in the song and dance Motown scene. That's the background that he came from, you know, having to do those kind of shows, and since he was a child, doing very tight choreography stuff with his brothers. Michael Jackson is such a great performer. He was able to take these routines and then put it in the context of a video. He could dance. Michael Jackson could dance. That's why he was able to use video. All he had to do was have the camera on. But in 1984, Michael Jackson introduced audiences to 14 minutes that was unlike anything they'd ever seen. His video for Thriller. The video, directed by John Landis, was the most expensive of its time. So I said to Michael, listen, Michael, I'd love to make something more elaborate, which Michael picked up on because that's what he wanted to do. His whole thing was, we got to be good, it's got to be great, it's got to be big. The best. The best. Thriller was the video that everyone was glued to their TV sets to see. It really was like the equivalent of a film opening today, you know, where people are like, did you see it? Did you see it? Did you go? It was definitely the music biz before Thriller and the music biz after Thriller. Thriller just took video making to a whole other level. These videos were like these swirling statements of his incredible talent as a performer. Thanks largely to Michael Jackson's event videos, Thriller became the biggest album of the decade and eventually sold over 40 million copies worldwide. Other artists had videos, other artists had records, but other artists weren't Michael Jackson. What's the problem? Michael sort of artistically raised the bar for everybody. Think about this, after that, you know, you see Pat Benatar, if you like that dancing going. We are young. Oh Lord, now we have to dance too. All of a sudden, everybody is Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers now. No, I'm not the Fred Astaire, but I could be. In my mind, I think I am. <laughs> Lionel dances about as good as me. I think I can outdance you, Lionel. By the time of Thriller's breakout success, the music industry had woken up. People were buying records again. Walkmans and CDs were lending music a high-tech air. Music was back, and much of the credit belonged to the promotional and artistic medium of music video. But not everyone was singing the praises of the new medium. It pissed off a lot of people who were just purely musicians. Uh, you're faking songs. Yeah. I think that's hard. All they can do is just kind of lip sync uh, a song and pretend to play their instruments. And, you know, I think that's yeah. Some musicians and some people that can make great records and maybe not particularly visually minded might get blown out. You know, so a good record could be killed by a bad video. You know, you talk video killed the radio store. I remember bands like Joe Jackson and Supertramp. When people saw what they looked like, it was over. I mean, the business of making music. I'm not an actor, and I'm not a dancer, and I'm not uh, trying to sell my face. 
thing I'd like to say about videos is that I, I sort of resent the fact that a kid grows up, dreams about playing the guitar, and all of a sudden has to be an actor. To me, that makes absolutely no sense at all. Yeah, but, but listen, when you perform on stage, you're acting. I mean, that's a performance, so what's... I mean, if someone puts a camera on you, what's the difference? A big criticism of video was that it destroyed the individual's response to the song. People said, well, you're spelling out the song in the video. I, I, I don't see that, actually. I think the sad thing is when you do a video for a song, it really pins it down, nails it all down, which I think is sad because the music should inspire your imagination somewhat. People have been very critical about it, you know, and oh, video spoiled this and video spoiled that, but there was a lot of fun to be had in those videos. I wasn't keen on making videos. I mean, that wasn't something I really wanted to do. When I did the video, I was so pissed off. Then I'm, gra I'm grabbing my fist and I'm attacking air because I'm so angry about having to do this. The stars who most resented getting in front of the camera were those who'd found fame before it was necessary for musicians to make videos. It took a long time for a lot of the major artists to feel like they needed to make videos. I always said, I'm not doing a video, you know, flat. I'm just not doing one. You got to hide. As a writer of tunes, as a guy who puts words together, you want people to use their own imagination. Everybody tried making a video, and there were definitely lots of times where you saw an artist on MTV, and they were smiling and lip-syncing, and you could just sense, right out of camera range, there was a rifle trained on them, making sure they did it. I'm still standing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the record companies force you to do them. They say you have to do them. I hate doing them. Um, I, I, when I say I hate doing it, I hate having to do anything. I had a tough time doing it. I really did because it's... I deal in audio, and to me, audio should do it all. But then I'm watching these video clips. A lot of the new groups are really doing it well. They really got it. It's exciting. I mean, there were some dissenters even at that point. The way I do that, you know, what make videos and, you know... But it quickly became, if you didn't, you're gonna get left behind, the boat is leaving. Well, in the high school lunchroom, you know, if you like Duran Duran and, and Culture Club, you're arguing with guys sitting across the table saying, hey, the boss would never sink that low. Well, guess what, the boss sank that low, and he wasn't as good at it as Duran Duran or Culture Club. Like many established artists, Bruce Springsteen initially resisted making a video, and in fact, didn't even appear in his first one. What do you think the relationship between music and video should be for you it's like a tool it's a powerful tool you know how i'm gonna address it or what i what i feel i'm gonna do with it yeah i'm not exactly sure but when he attempted to reach a larger audience he cleaned up his look hired director brian de palma and to the amazement of his fans even danced on tv the single dancing in the dark became his biggest hit the artists of the 60s and 70s who managed to attract new fans in the 80s were the ones who weren't afraid of video. A good video is a good song, and that's the bottom line. I, I still think of myself as a songwriter and a singer first. I have only recently begun, begun to become comfortable in front of a camera. I guess more people are, are adjusting to it these days because it's sort of automatic now. You make a record, you make a video. But in, in the old days, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was awkward for a lot of us. There was artists like Peter Gabriel, although he was a singer-songwriter, turned out to embrace video to such a great degree that he really pushed the entire genre forward. It was gratifying to see, for an MTV fan, these established artists trying to cross over to us, rather than waiting to cross over to them. Music video originated as an innovative medium for young visual artists and up-and-coming bands. But as the 80s progressed, everyone had gotten in on the act. Video had become the hippest form of artistic expression and an essential way to reach an audience. When we come back, 